What's up, guys? Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys a week seven match for Red, season eight in the Yellow Division, taking on my pal Beerbon and the Karaoke Crooks. Uh, Barry is currently top of the table at 6 0 plus 11. He's in first place, and I believe we are in fifth place the last time I checked at 4 and 2 plus 6. Our differential isn't fantastic, uh, but we took a huge loss to Nathan, uh, so it's really good in comparison uh, to the 5 0 loss that we suffered to Nathan. I will absolutely take 4 and 2 plus 6 right now. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about this matchup and Beery's team. So he has uh, Torn T, which is Z user, uh, Heatran, Pex, Mega Heracross, Raikou, Flygon Z user, Lycanroc Dusk, Lipard, Azumarill, Sawsbuck Z user, and Grumpig. I was not expecting the Grumpig out of all of this. I definitely expected him to bring the first five, and then I thought it would be one of Lycanroc Dusk or Azumarill, which I got wrong. Uh, he, he did bring the Grumpig. Um, not entirely sure what it is. If it's a belly drum grump pig, I will be so fucking happy. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's kind of what I'm anticipating there. Um, you know, my Entei set's a little bit wasted. If you haven't seen the team, go ahead and check out the team builder. It's a really lit team. I made a creative Entei set that I'm not going to discuss in this video. Um, just in case I upload this before the end of the season. I don't want to give it away uh, before... Uh, <clears throat> before playoffs so uh yeah um besides that i will talk about the other mons that you will see playing in this game because um yeah Entei doesn't really get to show off its stuff <laughs> uh whether or not that's a good or bad thing i won't spoil <laughs> uh let's just say uh it doesn't get too much uh, time in the spotlight so rotomo i'm fully spidef uh, it's it's a Raikou check. Uh, Suicune, mixed defensive. I ended up moving some speed onto it so that I would outspeed Adamant Max um, Adamant Max Speed Mega Heracross. Uh, Aggron is just really physically defensive. It's a rocker. Garchomp's three attacks. Z, or sorry, it's two attacks Z? Or is it three attacks? No, it's three attacks Z. Uh, Sword Stance, um, Entei, again, I won't talk about it. And then Reuniclus is Life Orb, Trick Room, three attacks. Uh, yeah, so really looking forward to this game. I was really not confident going into this. He's got some really good breakers for my team, and the Pex is a gigantic problem. Luckily, I have ways to beat the Pex. I have lots of coverage for the Pex, uh, and Reuniclus kind of just like sets up a Trick Room on it for free. Raikou is a big problem. Heracross is a big problem. Torn is a big problem. Heatran, I would imagine, is going to be a more defensive variant against me. Maybe a trapping variant with Magma Storm to... Uh, to beat Suicune, potentially. Um, I'm not entirely sold on that, necessarily, but uh, maybe a trapping variant to beat Clef, which he might be otherwise scared of uh, for the Mega Heracross. Um, yeah, Torn is most likely going to be the Z-user between... Nope, actually, it's the only possible Z-user on the team. Grumpig, again, I don't know what to expect from it. Uh, and Heracross, I'm expecting to have Bullet Seed to hit the Suicune. It may not, but it, it, it could. Uh definitely going to have some form of close combat otherwise mega Aggron just sits on its face if it's pin missile rock blast um likely has coverage it's probably pin missile and close combat i think those would be the two moves that he would want um because then he can hit the uh the reuniclus uh which he otherwise wouldn't be able to hit uh, either way he's walled by clefable so he's probably really happy to not see the clefable i don't think he's that surprised to not see clefable just because he tran and pex are there uh, let's get right into things here. I'm just going to lead with Rotom Mo. It's really my best lead against whatever the fuck he wants to bring in. And for some reason, he's going to lead with the Toxapex. Now, um, people have tried to hazard stack me all season just because my only removal is Rotom Mo. Again, I I've been under this impression that people are doing it just because they see that I don't have removal. But they keep forgetting that my team isn't that weak to hazards. Like, it, it really isn't that weak to hazards. I've got Magic Guard Mons. Mega Aggron doesn't give a fuck about hazards. Garchomp normally doesn't give a fuck about rocks. Like, it's just really strange to me why people prioritize hazards against my team when the only, like, honestly, even webs are, are kind of a waste in most scenarios unless there's some sort of matchup-based uh, thing with webs just because I don't have a fast team either. So it's really strange to me that people are prioritizing this, but uh, I'd imagine he's trying to prioritize T-Spikes against me. That's what I, the only reason I can think why you'd want to lead Pex against my team um, because, you know, my main leads are going to be either Chomp, Rotom, or Aggron, and Pex loses to all three of them. So, very weird. Very, very weird. Uh, I'm just going to raw Thunderbolt, honestly, and he switches into Torn on the electric move. Uh, really free Volt Switch for me on the Grumpik here. Um, and we see that that is max HP. Probably doesn't have that much 
special defense investment. I couldn't really tell exactly how much spitf investment it had, but it definitely didn't look like it was entirely specially bulky. So I'm going to get my coon in here and I'm just going to uh, fire off a toxic on the Grumpig here. Um, it's my best bet as he's actually going to go for the taunt, which is slower. So I'm really glad I put that speed investment into the Suicune uh, so that I could get the toxic off. It, it's pretty irrelevant that he, uh, that he taunts me here. Um, you know, even though I am or toxic protect I, I can still fire off scalds and get some decent damage off uh, on the grumpy here um, unless he's a rest set he's not gonna be able to do much and we see the recycle so we know he's not rest set anymore uh, he's gluttony berry um, which means he's also not thick fat for the Entei which is interesting as he's gonna recycle the eye of Papa Berry and you know, he's staying and he's taking all this toxic damage it's really free rocks for my Aggron so uh, I'm just gonna go hard into Aggron on the turn where I know he's gonna click recycle because it failed the turn before um, and I'm just going to get my rocks up as he goes into pecs. So uh, this turns out to be kind of a misplay. I should probably just click Earthquake or Seismic Toss or something as he's going to get up the T-Spike on my switch into Rotom. Uh, I'm going to gauge the damage on the pecs here. It doesn't look to be fully spadef again. Um, he's definitely not fully spadef on the pecs. So I'm not entirely sure where, where it's going as he's going to go and fire off the Scald and get the burn doesn't really matter just means that i won't be at full i'm gonna click defog now um i don't care that much about keeping my rocks up in terms of uh in terms of just making sure that his t-spike is gone uh, and i'm gonna volt switch out here into my uh into my aggron um now's the time where i'm gonna want to uh, get a t-wave off on this thing um and just sort of cripple the pecs make sure that i can do that which is get the full para uh, as i can go back on rotomo and i can just defog on this forever uh, he does go for the haze which is interesting so he reset his evasiveness um i don't think that matters all that much as the heatran comes in now on the defog um th this is a pretty easy scout for me to go hard into my suicune it, it should wall this thing it can't be z so unless he's raw solar beam which i can just protect uh, it's really no skin off my back as the lava plume comes off he does not burn me and he goes into heracross on the scald so uh, i'm not a huge fan of that play uh, i'll be completely real with you guys i'm not a huge fan of going hard heracross here uh, unless he was guts pre-mega which could definitely be a thing he could definitely be guts pre-mega that would be a huge threat to me uh, he eats the scald pretty well he looks he's definitely max hp maybe or maybe max spadef with some hp investment but uh, he's not off Offensive, and he's definitely not speedy. So I'm gonna go for another scald. I, I can kind of just punish him by going for another scald here um, And hopefully get the burn. I do not get the burn, but he subs which gives him even Less health on the Heracross. Now Heracross doesn't get any recovery He doesn't have any wish pass into it. The Grumpig is already on a timer um, The Pex is paralyzed now, so that's fine. Uh, Torn is chipped So it's not gonna be at full when it comes in which means it cannot eat a hit from the Rotom if it wants to It really can't eat a hit from anything at this stage um, except for my aggron, which can't really touch it. I've only got the seismic toss uh, on the aggron to, to hit things. So, um, yeah, the, this Heracross weakening itself. I am a I am a large fan of this. I am clearly outspeeding him, so he's not. He's definitely not max speed investment, anyways. Um, maybe just creeping min speed coon, but uh, I am running speed investment on this weekend, of course. Uh, so I'm at full health, and he's behind a sub, but he's really chipped. So I am very happy I got both of those scalds off. It really didn't matter if I. Um, it didn't matter what I had done there, essentially. So, uh, at this point, we see sub. He's definitely going to have SD. He's not going to be sub-3 attacks against me. It cannot break my team with sub-3 attacks. He needs to have sword stance. And this was kind of the target um, uh, for some of my prep. If the Azumarill didn't come, this was this was the target for some of my prep. Uh, but instead, I'm just going to ignore that completely, and I'm going to click Roar. Just get him the hell out of there. I don't want this to be a problem. Uh, you know, I'm not breaking his sub with Scald, so... I'll uh, just get him out into the Tox Packs, which I'm perfectly fine with. He's probably just going to set up another T-Spike. It doesn't really matter to me. I can just go into Rotom, and I believe I click uh, Defog again, or I click Thunderbolt this time. Ah, see. So I click Thunderbolt this time, and so now the Heatran's in. It's taking some chip. Uh, I didn't really calculate to see what sort of set this Heatran was. Um, I'm very spadef Rotom, so I wasn't expecting it to do that much to the Heatran anyways. It's nice that it looks like it's potentially a 4-hit KO. Uh, he clicks... He says bullshit. I don't know why he said that. Oh, bullshit that I brought the Toxpex out, I guess. Um, no, I, I, I don't understand. Uh, but either way, I am going... I'm not going to risk the Volt Switch because he might be faster than me with the Heatran. And so I don't really want to risk any uh, any damage on the Rotom unless the T-Spikes are gone. Because uh, T-Spikes are a problem for some of my plan. It's pretty irrelevant overall. 
Rotom doesn't take any damage from them. Reuniclus isn't going to take any damage from them. Neither is Aggron. Uh, the only thing that's a problem is that it's going to put Kuhn on a timer, and it's going to uh, do residual to the Garchomp, and it's going to affect the Entei. Um, so I want to get rid of the T-Spikes. It's not a huge priority, uh, and I've sort of put myself in a position where, because I didn't click Volt Switch there, um, or Defog for, for that matter, really, um, my Suicune is going to have to get poisoned. And uh, that's something I had sort of just succumbed to at this point. You know, the the Heracross is really weakened, and that was the main thing for Suicune to do anyways. So I, I didn't care too much. I'm just weakening the Heatran as well as he clicks Taunt. Uh, that's a very strange taunt play in my mind, unless he was just trying to stop a roar. Um, you know, he clearly, he brought the double taunt, dual taunt with the Grumpig and the Heatran, which is good prep, uh, I think, to stop basically any of my setup, but he just let his Heatran get super weakened as well. So his Heatran's really weakened, Grumpig's on a timer, Heracross is super weakened. Uh, I'm looking like I'm in a really good spot right now, because he really hasn't done anything, except this, like, 30% on Suicune. Uh, and burnt my Rotom, um, and that is actually literally it. So I'm sitting at a really good spot 20 turns in. Uh, he basically hasn't done anything to me. I've had momentum most of this game, and so I'm sitting in a really solid spot here. I do need to get my Rotom in uh, to defog this T-Spike away, so I'm trying to bait in the Pex here by just clicking Scald again, um, as the Pex does come in on my Scald. Um, pretty irrelevant damage. It's really not going to matter with uh, with the Black Sludge on it, but this will let my Rotom come in, and I will get a Defog off as he doubles into the Torn, predicting my Rotom. So, this is a key turn. Beery had a lot of problems with how I played this turn um, post-game, and I completely disagree with his stance on it because he doesn't know my team, and I know my team. <laughs> I know exactly where my priorities need to be. I need this T-Spike gone. As long as I can get rid of it, I'm perfectly fine with that. I know for a fact I'm not dying to any Z-move from this Tornadus right now. No, None of the Z-moves can kill me. So I'm perfectly fine just clicking Defog as he's actually going to go for a Heat Wave and miss the Heat Wave. Uh, again, I think this is completely irrelevant. As long as I get the C-Spike gone, uh, it's really irrelevant that I that I have that, uh, that he missed that Heat Wave. Um, and even though he's going to attack me again the next turn... Um, it it really doesn't matter you know the fact that his torn is his garchomp check isn't my problem uh that's his problem for not having a better garchomp check or not preserving his garchomp check it, it's just confusing to me why he's potentially sacking his torn against my rotom and he did admit this um so we're past it and whatnot but um yeah i'm just gonna click volt switch here Make sure that the T-Spike's gone. You know, I, I did get lucky by the Heat Wave missing. I'm not going to say I didn't get lucky. Uh, the Heat Wave miss obviously mattered because my Rotom would have been a lot lower of health and I don't have Pain Split on this. So it's it's whatever, right? But uh, I am just going to Volt Switch out as he's going to click Sludge Bomb. He can't poison me because I'm burnt, but uh, we are just going to be able to kill the Tornadus and Volt Switch right in my Garchomp. Um, he doesn't have a Garchomp check. Everything will die to Garchomp from this range. Uh, depending on his Raikou set, he cannot kill me with HP Ice from this range. Uh, if he's not a boosting item. So if he's Life Orb, he will kill me with HPAs from this range. If he's Specs, he will kill me from HPAs with this, at this range. Um, I'm faster than Grumpig. I'm faster than Heracross. I'm faster than Tran, which is sufficiently weakened. So even if he is Shookaberry, it's dying. Uh, Tox Specs would have to burn me to be able to 1v1 me. I don't even have to SD on it. I can just click Earthquake twice. Um, yeah, so this is what's going to happen. Grumpy's going to come in. I'm just going to click Dragon Z. I realize that uh, it dies. Even if it's fully max defense, it's a roll for Dragon Z to kill it. Um, I know he's got some spadef on him. So it can't be max defense anyways. Most likely it's going to die. Uh, so I just threw off the Dragon Z there and uh, bop that. Uh, then he's going to bring in the Toxpex and go for the Skull Burn, which he's not going to get. Uh, he got it on the Rotom, so I guess that's sort of is that um i thought about clicking dragonium um or i thought about clicking dragon claw to cover any sort of switch in but earthquake was just safer it really didn't matter his only earthquake resist is the heracross and i'm faster than it anyways in comes the heracross i'm going to reveal the area lace and just kill it uh dragon claw was potentially um not a kill on that heatran comes in it is shuka but i'm just going to be able to kill it so garchomp just picks up four kills basically for free because uh, i whittled down his entire team uh, but that Skull damage is worthwhile here for the Raikou. So, again, depending on his... I will kill him with an Earthquake unless he's Shookaberry Raikou too. Uh, but 
I'm not sure what item this is. So if he's a boosting item, he can kill me with HP ice. I want to preserve the differential. It's really not worth my uh, worth my time to not preserve my differential. And so I'm just going to go hard into my Reuniclus, uh, which can, I know can tank anything. Um, I'm running a little bit of spit F on it. And uh, yeah, so we take 12 from that HP ice, and he shows Calm Mind. So he's some form um, of setup variant, obviously. I'm just going to Psychic gauge the damage. It does a shield load because I'm Life Orb. And at this point, I realize it's in my best interest to click Trick Room here so that even if Reuniclus does die, Garchomp should outspeed it and be able to kill it or Entei can come in and kill it, or Aggron can come in and kill it with Earthquake. So I've got a lot of options as long as Trick Room's up. Um, and so he's just going to keep boosting on me. You know, I'm not super fussed about that unless he's some form of rest set. But if he's a rest set, then he doesn't have Sleep Talk. And he like, he's got to have an electric move. Uh, otherwise, he's walled by Suicune, which is mono HP Ice. Um, and so, you know, he's going to click Sub. And so we see HP Comma and Sub. Uh, and it was likely Thunderbolt was his last move. He thought he could Sub... Um, take less damage and sub uh i got a spit f drop somewhere here i got the spit f drop here um it, it probably mattered in terms of him being able to get up a, get up a sub uh but uh he wasn't going to be able to outlast this reuniclus even if he was boosting um boosted thunderbolt still wouldn't have been able to uh, the plus three thunderbolt i believe still wouldn't have been able to outright kill reuniclus um and even if it did uh Actually, that's a good question. Even if it did, I might have been in a worse spot then. Um, just because I'm not entirely sure where I wanted to go with that. But we pick up the 6-0 win over Barry and the Karaoke Crooks. I am very pleased with this. I said in the team builder, I was not expecting to win this game. So coming in and winning this game um, 6-0 was huge. Uh, I don't... I'm, I'm planning to not upload this until after the entire season anyways. But uh, just in case, I'm definitely not uploading the team builder before this battle um so that i don't give away my ente set as you saw ente didn't even see the field it's a really unique ente set uh that i don't want to I, I don't want to give it away uh because it's it's such a good ente set that i'm 100 percent going to reuse it if we if we if we rematch this season sorry um it, it's got such a good matchup against beery uh, i i don't think beery played this match very well um he's he's a solid player but I had momentum right off the bat. I put him in a really shit spot um, with with a lot of his mons. You know, the Heatran didn't have recovery because he didn't have like any Wish Pass or anything. He doesn't have Wish Pass on the team. Um, mons like Heatran getting whittled without leftovers is really free. Uh, same with the Mega Heracross. Like the, the Heracross and the Heatran both got whittled really early on. The Grumpig got toxic, which really sucked for it because even if it was to recycle shenanigans against me, it's eventually going to die when it's on the timer. You know, even though Toxpex has Regenerator and whatnot, um, the fact that he couldn't keep a T-Spike up against me was just really important. Uh, and Tornadus taking all of that damage turn turn one from the Thunderbolt actually played a big role in this uh, because it meant that he had to play around my Rotom a little bit differently. He couldn't pivot into Tornadus because uh, I was actually mono electric attacking. Uh, so his Tornadus was always at threat against my Rotom, even though I was fully spit F. Um, so yeah, I really do think turn one played a large role in this game because his Tornadus was never healthy enough to be able to check my Garchomp. And as you guys saw, Garchomp just picked up four kills as soon as it came into the game. Um, I wasn't even anticipating it to do that well, but it, it just kind of bodied his team. Um, you know, a lot of the mons that I really expected to check Garchomp, in, in quotations, check Garchomp, um, i.e. the Flygon, as in potentially a Scarf roll, uh, i.e. the Azumarill, i.e. the uh, the Lipard potentially encoring me, the Lycanroc outspeeding me, the Sawsbuck resisting, uh, resisting ground and just flinch haxing me with a Scarf set, uh, all of those didn't show up. So Torn was really his only Garchomp check, and so the fact that it got whittled down early and quickly um, put my Garchomp in a really good position to win this game, especially the Heracross. I mean, even the Heracross, right? Uh, you know, Aerialis wasn't killing it from full um, because of how bulky <laughs> that Heracross was that he built, um, but he let it get whittled against the Suicune. It took two Scalds, and then he subbed. Um, th that was just really unfortunate uh, for him. I mean, it, it was an unfortunate because I played that well, and, and he didn't play that very well. He risked the burn twice, uh, first of all. I mean, he, I guess he never had to Mega, necessarily. Uh, so he could have risked the burn twice, had Guts, and then just been more 
more powerful, but uh, I still don't necessarily agree that subbing there was necessarily the right play, unless he had taunted me first. He could have predicted me to be Vincoon, but I never showed sub on the talk specs, trying to PV stall it or anything like that, so um, you never know, right? But yeah, that's going to be the game. Uh, we move now to 5-2 and two plus 12, which is really solid heading into playoffs here. We are guaranteed, at, at worst, a 5-5 five and five record, and I can be very proud of that. 5-5 five and five minus 6, I believe, is our worst record that we could hit. Uh, we take on Recon Jack, or David, and the Pittsburgh Magic Guard next week. Uh, very scary matchup. David is actually second in the standings, so Fury was first, David was second. These are the two most important matches for us in terms of beating people above us in the standings. We have wins against the bottom three in the table, uh, so it's really important to pick up wins against the people higher than us um, so that we can move up in the seeds i'd love i would love to get a top two seed and get a buy through to the semifinals if i could uh, i think that would really prove to myself that i belong in yellow and i think going going at minimum five and five already tells me that i belong in yellow uh, i've played really well this season and i'm i'm not scared to to say that anymore uh just because you know, I, I took down the top the top person on, on the table in a really convincing way. Uh, David's got a really scary team. You know, he's he's got the I believe he's the only person we play with nine Pokemon. Uh, yeah, he is. He's the only person. Uh, nobody else has had nine, have they? A lot of people have had eleven. I have ten on my roster. Um, a few other people had ten on their rosters, but David's the only person with nine. So he really went. Um, over budget with a lot of the picks, but they're really strong picks, and that's what uh, that's what brings the team together a little bit there. Um, yeah, so we will be taking on David and the Pittsburgh Magic Guard. Really excited for that match. Hopefully, you guys are too, and I will catch you guys for that.